I hope everyone is well. Uh, this is a video on introduction to stoichiometry uh, using a technique called BCA charts. So stoichiometry sounds like a really fancy word, um, and it kind of is. Um, it's just the uh, part of chemistry where we really care about dealing with calculations involving quantities that are um, either in your reactants or your products. Um, comes from two Greek words, stoichion meaning element and metron meaning measure. So stoichiometry is all about measuring elements. We're going to blend a lot of topics that we've already covered, um, one of which is balancing equations. The other one is the mole concept. Both of those are going to tie in um, to this type of problem. So some tips. Um, the first thing we want to do in a stoichiometry problem is make sure that we have a balanced chemical equation. So let's go ahead and take care of that um, below. Um, we've got this reaction of hydrochloric acid, HCl. Uh, it's going to produce lead 2 chloride and hydrogen gas. And so looking at the equation, um, and I just maybe start to build um, the reactants from the products, I can already see that I can bring my lead over. Um, I can bring one chlorine over, and I'm going to run out of chlorine. Um, so let's think about how we would need to balance it. Um, we're going to balance it by adding a coefficient of 2 right here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just double my HCl. And now we can see that if I continue to build the product, now I've made a unit of lead to chloride, PbCl2, and I can make one molecule of uh, hydrogen gas as well. So let me go ahead and bring it back to kind of our starting reactants. Um, one thing to note, if it's hydrochloric acid, the HCl molecules would be dissociated. They would be charged. So maybe it's a little more accurate to show them something like that. Um, but we can see that that coefficient of 2 here um, is enough to um, balance the equation as we would want it to. So next we want to look at um, what is given and what we want to find. So what's given here is here in A. It says how many moles of HCl are needed to completely react with 4.0 moles of lead. So that 4.0 moles of lead is what we are given. And what we're trying to find would be how many moles of HCl, um, how many moles of HCl uh, would be required to react with that four moles of lead. We'd also like to know how many moles of lead chloride and hydrogen gas would be produced. So looking at both um, the products, uh, sorry, the reactant quantities and the product quantities. So I'm going to go ahead and in my chart here, again, we're using something called a BCA chart. And a BCA chart takes account for what's present before the reaction happens, uh, the change that occurs when the reaction happens, and then what's left afterward. So because I was given in the problem, four moles of lead. I'm going to go ahead and write that in as my given. And then I need to use the mole ratio to think about um, how many moles of HCl that would require. So this one's pretty simple. We've got coefficients, implied coefficients of one, one, and one here. If I have four moles of lead, I'm going to need it to react with twice as much or twice as many moles of HCl. So just using that 1 to 2 ratio, I'm going to need 8 moles of HCl. And before the reaction happens, I'm mixing these things together, um, I don't have any moles of product. That should make sense. Now the change that's going to occur is the four moles of lead are going to come together with eight moles of HCl and make the product. So the change that is going to occur here is I'm going to essentially lose four moles of elemental lead. I'm going to lose eight moles 
of HCl. I'm going to produce relative to these one mole of PbCl2 and one mole of H2O. Well, I want to look over here at lead. I had four moles to start. It needs to react in a one to one ratio. So what's going to happen with the PbCl2 is I'm going to make four moles of PbCl2 and I'm also going to make four moles of H2. So after the reaction has occurred, I'm going to say all of my lead has reacted. There are zero moles left. All eight moles of HCl have reacted. There are zero moles left. And then I would be left with, on the product side of the equation, um, four moles of PbCl2 and four moles of H2. Okay. So in this problem, the numbers are kind of nice round numbers. Um, you don't need to do a whole lot of calculating, hopefully, to figure this out. And the table will become more important when we get into more complex sorts of problems. I would encourage you, as a follow-up, to try number two, where we have calcium hydride reacting with water to form calcium hydroxide and hydrogen gas. I'm going to go ahead and stop the video. Please try it and come back and check with me to see if your answer is correct.